Hello and welcome to Flutzes and Waxels, a figure skating podcast to satisfy all of your skating news, analysis, and recap needs. I'm Mary Margaret Mertzos. And I'm Alicia Mertzos, and we're sisters with a lifelong love for figure skating, practicing, watching, and discussing. So let's delve deep into what's happened in the skating world this week. So as I'm sure you've realized by now, this past week, we were live in person at Skate Canada 2018. In Laval, Quebec. Yep. It's been a very, very busy weekend for sure. Yes. We have recapped everything briefly on YouTube if you're wanting a quick overview. Otherwise, um, get ready for lots of detailed analysis of the entire event. Yep, especially for this one because, yep. oh boy, this dance event was quite the thing. Overall, this competition was very strong across all four disciplines, yeah. with the exception of, of the ice, ice dance. dance, which was kind yeah. of a hot mess. Yeah, it was... There were obviously three separate falls, which yep. is ridiculous for an ice dance event, especially such a small ice dance 15 event. Fifteen percent of couples uh-huh. fell. Well, fifteen percent of, of programs, programs had a fall. Thirty percent of couples oh, fell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thirty percent. That no, that's like a men's event number. Yeah, that is way too much. Also, this was a toughly judged event in terms of levels especially in the rhythm dance but fairly so especially the tango romantica from just about all of the teams we were watching all the practices and there were not nearly enough teams working on it and it showed in competition it really did and i mean if we just get into one of the best tango romanticas of the entire event was Tweedle and Buckland's. Mm-hmm. They were the only team that was obsessively working on that Tango Romantica. And practiced it a number of times. There were a lot of teams who... Didn't you know, do it at all. Either didn't do it in run-through or only did a section or maybe ran through it once in a practice. And it showed in the levels and fairly so. That's yeah. This is a real tough pattern. You need to be putting some attention into it. Also, great way to intimidate. Yeah. Come on strategically it's a great way to intimidate your competitors by mm. showing them no we are amazing at this maybe that's why they didn't do it because they're not amazing at the tango romantica yeah that none was of definitely these teams the takeaway for literally every team here is go home and work on your tango romantica please none of them were what they should be yeah there were lots of level ones and b's yeah which b's mm-hmm Come on, guys. This is senior ice dance. We should yeah. not be getting bees on the pattern. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely, a, probably for me, the biggest takeaway in yeah. ice dance practices was just how little they were working on their tango romantics yeah. from just about everybody. I was really shocked because when we watched practice, like, for example, last year, we watched streamed practices where teams were doing the rumba. Mm-hmm. And they were doing lots of that rumba. Yep. And doing, you know, the big Mohawk Choctaws over and over and over again. That was not the case here. No, definitely not. And noticeably lacking in practicing those kind of dances. And this is 60 times harder than the rumba. Yeah. Well, and also worth more point-wise. So let's get right into it. We'll start out with our winners, Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue, winning back-to-back and booking their ticket to the final right yeah. away, as I think everybody expected. Although nowhere near as decisively as I think we all expected and mm-hmm. as they would have liked. They were second in that free dance. Yeah, and that free dance was really close between the top three teams. Um, they had more of a lead after the rhythm dance, although yeah. that was kind of in part due to other people's failings. Mistakes, yeah. But um, definitely for me, the rhythm dance was their stronger program. Definitely. They did change the costume and Bless. slightly change the ending pose yep. from last time around, which Thank obviously you. worked much better. And it's funny because they changed that ending pose during competition time. I was at, like the, the day of yeah, that competition. Yeah, because... On Thursday, when we saw them practice their rhythm dance, they were in that original pose yep. and not looking very stable. And then the following day on Friday, when they ran their rhythm dance in practice, we noticed that they were in a different ending pose ever so slightly. Yep. 
but it made all the difference because she was solidly on her feet. Yeah, which obviously made the difference last time around. Yeah. Yeah, and their rhythm dance overall was definitely one of the stronger ones of all the yeah. teams here, but still only level one and level three on the two halves of the Tango Romantica, which For is shame. still not great. We no. can do better. We can do so much better. Surely Patrice Lozon is- expects better. I would hope, but again, we didn't see a whole lot of run-throughs, yeah. so maybe they were more worried about other elements. But yeah, the the rhythm dance for me was definitely their stronger program. Yeah. Their free dance... Oh boy, it's time to talk about their free dance. Yeah, we discussed last time that we were really hoping seeing it in person would you know, be that differentiator. Sometimes... You need to be, you know, there in person to get to the feel full the impact. energy and yeah. And I wanted, I was trying to love it. Yep, it didn't. didn't. It it just didn't give me, you know, that emotional feeling. We'll talk yeah. about Gillis and Poirier's free dance yeah. in a little bit. I felt that emotion from them, and this. Free dance left me a little cold and it made me sad, honestly, because again, I was trying to make myself love this program. I was, you know, we were overly invested in this Mm -hmm. ice dance event. And so if there was ever a time that I was going to emotionally react to this free dance, it was this weekend Mm -hmm. and it was fine and they are great, Mm -hmm. but this free dance is so not my favorite. And then... We watched their exhibition on the train home, (laughs) and I spent the entire exhibition going, why isn't this your free dance? Make this your free dance right now. I don't know what it is about the character, maybe just that the music is so overused, but, you know, I can enjoy them and what they're doing, but it wasn't an emotionally immersive experience. So it just went, okay, that was some nice skating, but it didn't go beyond that for me. It looked like they and the coaching team were trying to replicate Tessa and Scott's experience last year of taking this piece that is a love it or hate it piece Mm -hmm. and that's overused and making it iconic. Yeah. Except this really fell short. And so it just felt like an average Romeo and Juliet program. Yeah, which is, it's a real shame. And it was a shame to see as well that even the audience in person, just they seem to, you know, politely applaud at the yeah. end. Like not, well, it was enthusiastic. Not even, it was enthusiastic enough, but it wasn't, you know, the Thunderous. crowd wasn't thundering over it. Yeah. And I mean, to be fair, this crowd had personality problems. <laughs> um, but they are capable of enthusiasm. Yeah. There was wild enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. Albeit it was Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier who are Canadian. Yeah. Extra bit of appreciation for an amazing program from a Canadian, but they were perfectly capable of being excited. Yeah. And, and it was noticeable that they weren't really yeah. overly excited for helping you know, Donahue. There were a few people on their feet, but not nearly as many as for someone like Medvedeva in the ladies or Tuk mm-hmm. in the ladies or Gillis and Poirier or even like Shoma Uno or somebody. Yeah. There were lots of non-Canadians who got decent sized standing O's. Mm-hmm. These two were not one of them. Yeah. I I and mean, at least for them, they've now booked their ticket to the final time to do they've, some reworking. I was about to say, maybe it's time to go home and rework this a little bit to see because again, they didn't even win the free dance. Again, it was yeah. close and they would have won without the extended lift deduction. But you don't, you know. They were barely ahead of the Russians in PCS, which yeah. to me, in this particular case, these two teams says the judges don't love this program. Yeah. Because because really they should have won this easily. Yeah. This whole event easily. They should have been, you know, a decent chunk ahead of the Russians in its nine Katsalapov. And that's the thing. They were in the rhythm dance. Yeah. They were definitely not in the free dance. And it wasn't like there were major problems in yeah. the free dance. So that to me and hopefully to Marie France Debray and Hovland Donahue and the whole team says okay, this left people cold. Yeah. Mm. Need to try and fiddle Mm. with things. Throw in a rave or something. (laughs) 
Take a lesson from Jin Huan, Jin Huan Cha's I mean, free skate. And... If you look at it, they're skating to essentially the same music. They've mm-hmm. chosen different selections. People are loving, freaking out about Jin Huan Cha's free skate. Yeah. And there are plenty of people that like this free dance. Mm-hmm. But I have not seen anybody passionately defend this free dance to me when I complain about it. Yeah, I can't say that I have either in that, you know, especially from Hubble and Donahue. Well, that's the thing, you know, finally on the world podium and we had lots of teams retire Mm -hmm. or taking time off. So this is your time to cement your Your status. Your dominance. Yeah. Because they could be. And this program is just not doing it, which is a shame for them because we know that they are capable. And then we went and watched their exhibition, which go watch their exhibition so you see what I mean. Because I don't really know the song. I think the song was by Janelle Monet. Yeah. I don't really know the song, but I was into it from like 10 seconds in. Yeah. Like, no, this is much more them. It's, you know, still the romantic vibes, but it's a little more edgy, a little different. Well, and more fun than their free yeah. dance from last year and less, I don't know, this super lovey-dovey romantic character I've never really loved from them as yeah. much in their programs. Romance from these two is good when it's got something paired with it. Yeah. This is just lovey-dovey. Mm-hmm. And they're not even, you know, young enough that Romeo and Juliet makes a ton yeah. of sense. I mean, you don't have to be, you know, 16. 14 year old to skate to Romeo and Juliet, but it does kind of help because it is about youthful, youthful stupid love. Yeah. And these two feel, well, and they skate much more maturely than that. Yeah. And so it feels a little like pitching in for what you think people want, Mm -hmm. even though what we want from you is weirdness. (laughs) Because people like their weird programs. The the kind of strange stuff that Marie-France Debray gives them. Well, and I will say, I... Their short dance from a few years ago that like pop music through the ages. I did not like that program, but I remember that program far more than I I remember this program. I like it better than this one. I I don't know. It's tough for me, but I certainly it's more memorable for sure. In the moment, I did not like that short dance at all. But now I'm like... At least it was fun and interesting and wacky. It certainly held my attention. Yeah, this is just bland. And I would take bad, wacky, (laughs) fun program over bland, especially with these two 100% of the time. It'll be really interesting to see, you know, they've got until December. Mm -hmm. They've got a good solid month and a bit to work on things. I'm serious. Throw in a rave. Yeah. Yeah. I think that might fix this program. Possibly. Throw in a rave. <laughs> at this Just point. To steal from Jun Huan Cha and throw the dramatic Juliet in at the I end. I mean, I wouldn't object at this point. At least it would be interesting. Yeah. Because this, it's not interesting. Mm-hmm. It's just it's what you think of when you th- when you, as a person who knows nothing about ice dance, think about ice dance. Yeah. This is what you expect, which is not a good thing. Yeah. It's a shame because we know that they can do better. They're so good, but this program is not. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was definitely sort of the biggest disappointment in a way for me. Yeah. This was absolutely one of the biggest disappointments for me. It is not the biggest. Yeah. We will get to my biggest (laughs) disappointment of the entire competition. Mm Mm-hmm. But this was second, I yeah. think, for me, because it was not, I wish I loved it. Mm-hmm. I wish I loved it as much as I wanted to. Yeah. Anyway, should we move should move on. on. <laughs> second place here were Victoria Sinitsina and Nikita Katsalapov, who actually won the free dance. Again, it was really close yeah. in the FD between the top three teams. But, you know, that is a huge victory for them uh-huh. winning the free dance. And I have to say I was very amused by the fact that these two, to me, were looking really rough in the practices yep. and even the warm-ups before the event. And things like the Tango Romantica, the Twizzles, some of the lifts were just not going well. And then somehow in competition, they all came together. I yeah. don't know how they did it. But... I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it because 
those twizzles especially Mm -hmm. were a hot mess in the warm-up yeah and then they came out and she only got a level three but i was expecting uh uh-oh are we gonna lose her entire twizzle yeah i mean that was the thing they were really rough in the practices they also didn't do a ton with the tango romantica and what they did they got really off pattern Mm -hmm. in one of the practices doing their run through and i thought oh no this is going to be a disaster and a couple times it looked like she was going to fall over Mm -hmm. on that opening step the double three turns which deceptively hard yeah again you watch manta and johnson from u.s international Uh classic and you can see what can go wrong with that step that step is super hard but also you should not be falling over Mm -hmm. as a senior ice dance couple especially at the level they're at yeah I do have to say this rhythm dance is absolutely for me the best program and the most that I have enjoyed watching them skating like bar none. This is a fantastic program for them and, you know, definitely impressive to see just their intensity in person. I think that that is what has been missing from all of their other programs to this Mm -hmm. point is that intensity. They've done a lot of sweet lovey-dovey stuff Mm -hmm. and for them as well the a neither of them is great with the lovey-dovey looks in the face Mm -hmm. which doesn't help and he is especially is just so the epitome of resting tango face head to toe (laughs) that's the thing he does great with a tango he He does he is sharp and precise Mm -hmm. and looks angry 24 7 yeah and has the the shoulder set yeah in a very tango-y way which is why for me as well their free dance also i was a little bit cold cold yeah like it was her dress and madison hubble's dress yeah not where i'm going but yeah um, sum up my feeling about these I mean, dances. Yeah. Grage. Yeah. Unfortunately, they have nice moments. Yeah. Similar to Hubble and Donahue. There are individual moments of their free dance where I take and go, okay, that was nice. They have some cool lifts. I still like their one foot step sequence, yeah. although it was not executed quite as well here as there it was before. Are good elements, good stuff. He especially is a great skater. She's good, but he steals the limelight. He's in terms definitely, of skating. yeah, he's definitely the star of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but she looks fantastic in a lift as well. Yeah. So you got to give her that. Um, and she they makes do, nice lines. They do come alive at the end when the music tempo yeah. starts to pick up. And once that happened, I it felt a little jarring. But at the same time, I kept thinking, okay, where was this for the rest of the program? Why didn't we have like twenty seconds at the beginning of the slow mm-hmm. lovey dovey stuff and then? Just get even just a little bit more dramatic. Yeah. I I think it suits them better. Yeah. These two do much better with the dramatic or, again, weird, something Mm -hmm. that is not sweet, simple, lovey-dovey. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, though, they certainly scored well with it. Winning the free dance here is, like I said, a huge win for them, especially coming off of a really rough season last year with injury and whatnot. Yeah. I mean... This was a strong result for them, and I have to say not what I would have predicted coming in here, but Mm -hmm. they earned it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, to be fair, they did have help from Mm -hmm. our third place team, Gillis and Poirier, who were the first of the teams we will discuss with a fall in a program. Yeah. It was, it really is just such a shame that these two in the beginning of their season, in their Grand Prix, somehow just the disastrous mistakes come in yep. in the short program. I don't know how it keeps happening, if maybe it's just a nerves thing or they're really trying to push so hard that I think they go es- over the edge. I think especially this season, that's going to be the thing that they have to learn to toe the line with. Yeah. Because right now, they're Canada's top ice dance team. Mm-hmm. With Weaver and Poget out for at least the beginning of the season... They're our number one team. Yeah. And so I think that they feel that pressure to make it to the final. Yeah. And I mean... Well, and the thing is, I honestly believe that if they had, you know, not had the giant mistake in the rhythm dance, that would have given them a good few points. And had they skated in the final flight of the free dance, I think they would have won at least that segment. Yep. 
maybe even the entire competition. I completely agree. That free dance was the highlight of the entire Skate Canada International for me. Yeah. It is stunning. It's, and that was the emotional moment that I uh-huh. wanted from Hubble and Donahue. Gil is in Poirier totally delivered on the emotional as well as the technical yeah. side of things. I, it was funny. I was almost crying by mm-hmm. the end of it. Of both programs, but yeah. for different reasons. Different reason. <laughs> Happy tears at the end of the free dance. And we were in public Mm -hmm. and I was unable to control the fact that I was going to cry Um, because it is just so beautiful. And you can tell that they connect with this music so much Mm -hmm. and the little details are so stunning from the way that they start the program where he lifts her right over his head. Yeah. That like that ending lift, which is so fantastic. Even the exit is so cool. The exit was like one of the best moments to see in person yeah because you sort of lose some of the nuance of this free dance on camera i was blown away by that free dance yeah and i mean they were really close in terms of scores in the free dance too that again it's always a shame when this happens but you know if you're skating in an earlier flight you do get dinged a little bit on the PCS because yeah. they're saving room for somebody to be better. I legitimately think if they were in that, you know, final flight, which they were, I believe, one one hundredth of a point yep. off one of one hundredth of a the point. dance, I do think that at a bare minimum, they would have easily won that free dance. Yeah. If they had been one one hundredth ahead, mm-hmm. or Lorio and Legac, it was Lorio and Legac. No, right? Wong and Liu. Oh, were right. Fifth. Wong and Liu were fifth. If either one of those teams had had two one hundredths of a point more or less, mm-hmm. they would have won the free dance. Yeah. Because it was that close in that free dance score. All three teams were over 120. Yeah. And within and it, half a point of each other. Yeah. Half a point is three judges yeah. giving you one PCS mark a quarter of a point higher. Yeah. Which that's totally within reason mm-hmm. to change between that first flight and that second flight and i mean at least for them because they had such a fantastic skate in the free dance they were able to move up to the podium even that i was a little worried and again they as well had a little bit of help from other teams in getting there it was really good to see a bit of redemption for them but i hate that this is unfortunately a recurring theme where they have to have redemption where the issues creep in. in yeah um, yeah, speaking of which, we should actually talk about the mm-hmm. horrible, not so great thing that happened <laughs> in that rhythm dance. So apparently people missed it when they were watching live, Yeah, which I'm kind of shocked because it was but, very obvious from where we were sitting. Well, yes, but I mean, we, we, we know all the elements and we pay yeah. very close <laughs> attention to the feet, which, which let's be honest, a lot of people who either don't yeah. care as much about ice dance or don't really get it very much. They're, they're looking at the top half. They're not looking so much at but the she feet. she disappeared behind yeah. the boards. Like we couldn't actually see her hit the ice because mm-hmm. we were like on, in the, that on that same side where it happened. Well, basically in that exact corner. Yeah. Um, so we just, she just won't disappeared. Mm-hmm. And I mean, she didn't go completely all the way down. They still got the fall deduction, Mm -hmm. but she didn't fully splat, Yeah, which is a miracle. And it kind of happened in the best possible place right between the first section of the Tango Romantica and the second section so that they didn't lose either. They, you know, got... An interruption of less than four beats. Yeah, an interruption and obviously lost a lot of the key points and got negative GOE, but it could have actually been a whole lot worse Uh than it was. It's a miracle, although judge number two, I got to call you out (laughs) on that plus one GOE Yeah, on the first half. Dude, I know that you're trying to be nice, Mm -hmm. but but a fall in an element. Negative GOE at the minimum. minimum. Yeah. Um, Yeah, they got really lucky. First of all, kudos to you, Paul Poirier, for getting her back up that quickly. Yeah, well, and it was lucky as well that he didn't fall also, which could have happened. Good for you for being as sturdy as you are in salvaging this. 
Because if he had not been as sturdy, they would not have made it onto the podium. No, definitely not. Because they would have lost one or both sides of the Tango Romantica. Mm -hmm. Plus extra fall deduction. Plus an extra fall deduction. More bad GOE if they got Mm -hmm. one of the sections. Plus recovery time, Mm -hmm. messing up other things. It's a miracle. Bless you, Paul Poirier. (laughs) Thank you for that. Because it is... I just really hope that next event... Don't do this again. Just just a clean skate. You will give me a heart attack if you do this again. They still have a potential of making it to the final, but it's it's tough now. Yeah. They it depends on what other people do and it depends on what kind of scores slash placements they can get at their next event. They're going to need to be second. Yeah. And yeah, even again, then, unless weird things happen in yeah. the rest, but it's ice dance, so I don't expect weird things to happen. Although, three weird things happened yeah. this weekend. So, so who knows? knows? Also, the Tango Romantica is a, a tricky thing. Yeah. But, but yeah, they were definitely one of the lowest points of the ice dance event uh-huh. and the highest at the yeah. same time. Yeah. They had the second lowest mm-hmm. low point in the rhythm dance and were my highlight of the entire competition yeah. in the free dance. No, I think I would agree with that. That was, for me, the best program of the weekend yep. across all disciplines. Yeah. All right. Fourth place were Marie-Jade Lorio and Romain Legac, who actually were looking really strong yeah. in this competition. They really polished up the free dance, especially. Um, they were definitely looking not quite as confident in, you know, a lot of some of the elements, the transitions in and out of elements um, in their last competition. Not doing very well on the Tango Romantica. I know it's a trend, but a level yeah. one and a B, unacceptable. The only team that did that bad or worse is Gillas and Poirier, and they had a fall. Well, I think Here. there might have been another level one and a B, if I recall. I like there were a so. lot of there were yeah. lots of level ones. Oh no, there was another yeah, one and B. Yeah, and Ferris also oh, had right. a one and a B. And I think oh god, hang on, who else was below? Uh, yeah, Sales and Wompsteaker also had a one Jeez. and a B. Yeah, yeah. Like we said, not good Tango Romanticas no. from just about anybody no. in this competition. I had thought all of those teams at the bottom got level ones on both halves. Nope. Nope. Of course not. Yeah, so lesson here. Everybody, practice your Tango Romantica obsessively. First hour of practice Mm -hmm. every day, just the Tango Romantica over and over and over again until you do it right. Yeah, there were not enough people practicing it in those practices and warm-ups. Minimum level twos before you can stop practicing it for an hour a day every day. But I have to say, for these two, that was the only... Yeah. You know, big issue. Um, I definitely prefer their free dance to the rhythm dance. The free dance is just so much fun. And they definitely won the audience's heart in that second flight of the free dance. In terms of like audience enthusiasm, it was Gillis and Poirier, Lorio and Legac, and then the other two Canadians, and then everybody else. Yeah. And to be fair, part of that was the audience having personality problems mm-hmm. and also not understanding ice dance, but they earned that second place in the hearts of that crowd <laughs> in the free dance. Because yeah, it is just such a fun program. He gets so into it. Um, obviously, you know, Serpentine Step level one is not your best thing. Yeah. But I think for them, it's a great idea to get the tough stuff out of the way. They do the one foot step. Then the twizzles, then the serpentine step, and then just have fun for the rest. Perfect strategy. Just work on your levels for yeah. the step sequences. But yeah, I that... overall, I thoroughly enjoyed watching them in this competition. And I mean, one of the best choreographic sliding moves yeah. in ice dance. That slide across center ice is so great. And even just going right into their character step into yeah. the ending pose, it's really sudden and goes with the music really the whole thing just goes so well with the music and he is living for (laughs) this bruno mars medley yeah he is having the time of his life from start to finish yep and when it comes to this type of ice dance number that's what you need yeah i need you to full commitment be living for this program start to finish and i would rather have that on a level one step sequence yeah than 
the opposite. I mean, that was the thing. The The turns obviously were not as clean as they need to be, but I enjoyed myself mm-hmm. enough that it didn't bother me. Yeah, I was having a hell of a time during... And, and I mean, they beat... There were a lot of teams in this competition sort of competing with each other. Basically, yeah. all of the other... Gadbois teams other than Hubble and Donahue were sort of fighting from dom- for dominance amongst themselves yep. and they won that battle so that's a, a victory for them for sure and I mean speaking of Gadbois teams we should talk about the fact that there is only one Gadbois team on the podium mm-hmm. despite the fact that most of this event was Gadbois teams well to be fair only half half only half the event was... half you had half the teams and you only managed to get one of them on the podium <laughs> All of you are in trouble. (laughs) Well, we did definitely have, especially from the rest of the teams going down the list here, some issues. So Smart and Diaz were third in the rhythm dance. And I really thought that if these two had had a strong skate in the free dance, they probably would have been on the podium. It was a real shame to see... I, I really love this free dance for them. It's a great music choice. It's unfortunate that you can never watch it on YouTube because the Beatles and music rights issues, but it is a fantastic choice for them and they get so much more into it than I felt they did with most of last year's free dance. Yeah, this year's free dance is definitely a stronger choice for them. Um, The problem here was definitely those levels. They just Mm -hmm. were not getting the turns done cleanly. Well, and even the quality of, for example, the one foot step sequence, they got it done and it was better than, you know, Autumn Classic and things, but it was still not as good as you need it to be if you're going to get on the podium. Also, if you're going to get a level two, you need to fake that level two so well (laughs) that you get a plus four on it as opposed to plus twos on a level two yeah they had lots of plus ones and twos across the board which i do think is fair but which is a shame because in the rhythm dance they were just looking so strong and even in the free dance earlier in the season yeah i mean they have some fantastic lifts and some really interesting choreography that you know i think their free dance had the potential to really grab the audience but they were tentative yeah they were tentative and really focused in on getting the elements done yeah they weren't selling us the free dance like they could have been and i wonder if that was in part the pressure of staying in that third place or moving yeah, up it might well have been i wouldn't be surprised if that played a factor in the nervousness and tentativeness yeah. in the free dance they did look nervous in that free dance it was still good but yeah it has the potential to be amazing yeah And, you know, they got a battle at home. So, you know, still this wasn't too bad of an outing for them. And they were close to the podium, about wound up about 10 points back. And, you know, if you work on your GOEs, on your step sequences in the free and that freaking Tango Romantica, Uh they did slightly better. Level two and level one, which I mean, the fact that that's better is. Yeah. I mean, here that was a pretty good Tango Romantica. Yeah. Which is sad. Pathetic. (laughs) It's pathetic. Yeah. It was Guys, very disappointed in the quality of Tango Romantica's presented in this I know. I want it because it's such a cool pattern mm-hmm. dance. I was really excited to see some really good ones in person. Spoiler alert. There were no really good Tango Romantica's. Nope. Also not even in the practices. Barely no. anybody did them. There were some was... decent ones, but none were amazing. No pathetic again guys. take home for everybody in this competition go home and work on your pattern also everybody who hasn't competed yet yeah that too go work on your pattern all right and then sixth place were Shi Yue Wang and Xin Yu Liu from China who had a really good rhythm mm-hmm. dance these two um for these two their main struggle of late is just well and not even lately it's yeah. always been their thing is just getting the levels they're always really engaging in their skates and usually, you know, GOE is not too bad and they can get the audience on their side. It's just making sure to get all those levels down pat. Yeah, they were really struggling with... Especially the one footstep yeah, sequence. A level one and a level two on that. But even their rotational lift was yeah. only a level three, which... Well, and their uh, curve lift as yes. well. 
which they do not usually get level threes on their lifts. Their lifts mm-hmm. are usually the one thing we can count on them getting their levels on, mm-hmm. and they didn't. Yeah, their their free dance for me was definitely more tentative than we've seen from them earlier this season. And I wonder for them too if it was that sort of internal competition of all yeah. the teams that they train with. And, you know, even just being fifth after the rhythm dance, for them, that was a really good placement. And I still think sixth overall is a really good spot yeah. for them to be. Um, but, you know, the, the free dance especially could have been stronger. And they yeah. as well looked a bit tentative and a bit nervous. Yeah, by the end of the program, she was able to really sell it, mm-hmm. which is their strongest point is her and the enthusiasm that she has. Yeah. Um, but it took a really long time to get to that point. They had to get all of the tough elements out of the way first. Yeah. And then seventh place were Tweedale and Buckland, who competed back to back here. And it was yeah. good to see this was yet another team having an improvement from their uh, their first outing. And the other thing that was really nice to see was they were the only team who practiced and practiced and practiced their Tango Romantica they only got level one in the first half, but a level three in the second half. So good, good on, on you. you. Also good on you for actually, you know, working on it. They yeah. were working on it a lot in the practices. They spent probably 15 minutes of that rhythm dance practice, which mm-hmm. is only 30 minutes. Yeah. Working on that Tango Romantica. And the thing is, it showed and that definitely helped, you know, a leg up over yeah. a few of the teams who finished behind them. And even though they kind of flubbed the first half, it was much more confident than a lot of the other teams who got the similar level or even a little bit higher, they looked mm-hmm. more confident in that first half, yeah. which helps with the GOE at the very least. And I mean, we got to talk about this program overall <laughs> because this program, the music selection is genius. It's a yep. skating music guy program. Yep. We talked about it on Twitter a bit. I, Whatever Lola wants is a really great song for ice dance because it allows you to bring a character into the tango romantica and it fits as tango or rumba, which is fantastic. Perfect. And then to thread liber tango underneath it. Mm -hmm. Only acceptable use of liber tango this season. Yeah, just about. There are too many liber tangos (laughs) and they're all boring. This is a fun liber tango. Mm Mm-hmm. I love this program. Really smart choreography, smart music choice. Well, that's the thing. Both programs really play to their strengths. And they did really well in the free dance, especially. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, looking consistent and pretty strong in the practices as well. They obviously, you know, little things like working on the speed throughout and the confidence of some of their edges, you know, working on you know, being able to have different holds and project out more while you're doing the tough turns is something they need to work on. But in terms of, you know, getting the job done, they absolutely did what they needed to here. Yeah. I mean, especially on warm ups with all the Gadbois teams, they are definitely quite a bit slower than the Mm -hmm. Gadbois teams. But as long as you're getting the turns done, which a lot of the Gadbois teams did not this weekend, Mm -hmm. it's worth it to be a little slower and the speed will come. Yeah, they're still they're, quite young. I was about to say they're young enough that I'm not concerned. And I think this, you know, this has been a good start to their senior Grand yeah. Prix experience for sure. Also, we should mention if anybody didn't realize who was in the kiss and cry with them, it was Nicholas Buckland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really good to see him, you know, still coming to competitions, yeah. even though he's not competing any longer. Yeah. And then eighth place, <sighs> we're Susie Sinferis, who, who were definitely the biggest disappointment disappointment in the rhythm dance for sure and it was a real shame too that even in the free dance they couldn't really get their confidence back they were also yeah. skating first in that the free dance that did not help yeah um they really struggled in that rhythm dance yeah, from I mean, the beginning i mean that's the thing only she only got a level 3 on the twizzles and then a bass and level 1 on the tango romantica and then of course that midline step where she caught her foot and fell. And yeah. Alicia, we, we rewatched and you can't hear her. Bless. You can't hear me scream. Alicia instinctually yelling, no, <laughs> as soon as it happened in person. It also happened in what felt like slow motion. <laughs> because it happened, again, right in front of us. Yeah. 
Um, they were right at, you know, our end of the rink starting their midline step and they do their really great but really risky move mm-hmm. where, you know, they stick she sticks her foot on top of his yep. and they do the little kicks and then their blades got locked together mm-hmm. and she went down and she did not stand a chance. Yeah. And I still cannot believe I actually screamed no in the <laughs> middle of that arena. Everybody turned around and looked at me like I was insane and I just kept thinking <laughs> But they've lost now. Yeah. They're done. Because 99.9% of that arena had no idea that that was an element. Slash the most valuable element Uh in the rhythm dance. Which is why a fall in your step sequence is about as disastrous as you can get. Yeah. Especially right at the beginning. Because they then wound Mm -hmm. up with a level one. Because they spent so much time trying to catch up. Yeah. And, you know... The judges were generous on that GOE. Yeah, definitely. Only minus threes and fours, which was kind. Th- there's if a... it were me, like automatic minus well, five. And it's in the it's in the handbook. Yeah. If there's a fall on an element, it's a mandatory minus five, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were very generous about falls and ice dance this weekend. Yeah. All three falls, we were very generous. Mm-hmm. These guys at least were given less benefit than Gillis and Poirier who got a positive GOE on the element they fell on. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a disappointment to mm-hmm. be sure. Cause that rhythm dance especially is so, so fantastic. Good. I wonder if they were just, again, those nerves of knowing yeah. that, you know, getting on the podium might've been tough here, assuming everybody skated clean, but they definitely could have been a strong, you know, fourth place. Yeah. Beat out mm-hmm. some of the, their teammates from Gadbois who were sort of all competing against well, each other. This is also almost a mini Canadian nationals. Yeah. I mean, establishing anything close to dominance when it comes mm-hmm. to Gillis and Poirier would have been very important to them Yeah, because they want to make sure that they get spots everywhere. Yeah. And the more that they can establish, established no we are one of Canada's top teams especially right now it would have set them up for success they're not in big trouble yet yet if this becomes a habit then it might be a trouble Uh, this at least is only one competition and this is sort of their first obviously they skated senior last season but it was the Olympic season and you know they were not going to get an Olympic berth unless something disastrous happened so the pressure wasn't as high and Virtue and Moyer were still skating. Yeah. And Weaver and Poge were competing full out. Mm-hmm. Like, they were very much Canada's fourth place team. Yeah. Um, and so they there wasn't nearly as much pressure. And now they're really Canada's second place team at the moment, at Slash least. Slash third, depending yeah. what Weaver and Poge yes. decide to do. It I- also depends on uh, Fournier, Baudry, and Sorensen. Yes, and they're... And- and Status. how they but in this moment currently mm-hmm. with Weaver and Poge out and Fournier Baudry and Sorensen not having status yet they are Canada's number two team yeah. and they want to stay in that spot exactly when people come back so they I'm sure we're hoping for better than this yeah definitely and honestly I was too because uh-huh. we we saw them make some silly mistakes at Autumn Classic as well there were worse mistakes here yeah but they're definitely you know got some things to work on especially like going into Canadian Nationals yeah and I mean it was a real shame to see them have so many mistakes here because they've got two cool programs yeah they're both really fantastic and I expect by the end of the season we'll see them skated better but they need to start skating them better to make yeah. sure that they get those international assignments yeah. in the second half of the season. They need to make sure that they step it up so that they don't lose their spot to Fournier Baudry Sorensen theoretically. Yeah. I mean that's the most likely team to take it but you mm-hmm. can't Canadian ice dance is tough. Mm-hmm. There is no room for this kind of mistake. Yeah. Well, and if we go on to ninth place, Haley Sales and Nicholas Womsteker were not that far behind them, mm-hmm. only about five points. So really, that's closer than they would have liked to see St. Fierce, I'm sure. Well, I mean, if we look at the caliber of skating that we were expecting from these two teams, mm-hmm. Sales and Womsteker did pretty well for themselves. This is about what we expected. Yeah. Not last yeah. is was the goal, I think, at least for me, for them. Yeah. Well, and also trying to, you know, get those levels yeah. for them as well. That Tango Romantica. 
you got to work on it. That was, you know, a big problem. But in terms of other things, you know, a level two on the midline step in the rhythm dance and then in the free dance, I believe they had a level one. Yeah, level one on the circular step. And a level one on the one foot step for her and a level two for him. Yeah. Otherwise, though, not doing too bad on the levels. And for them, I think it's definitely about just gaining that competition experience and working on making sure you hit those levels. Again, go home and work on your Tango Romantica. Start there. That's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, But this was a pretty solid pair of skates for them. Yeah. And yeah, they didn't look out of place in this event for sure. They seemed confident and comfortable in this area. And I mean, they've got to be pretty happy with being this close to mm-hmm. Susie Sinferis. Yeah, for who, sure. you know, we expected to be in podium contention. Yeah. Tough podium contention, but contention. And they very much were not here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they have two really fun programs, mm-hmm. Sales and Womsteaker. And again, they, I was not disappointed for them. They're, you know, a yeah. young up and coming team. So the expectations were a little lower, still things to work on, but you know, for their capabilities. I was happy with their, their yeah. skates here. And I mean, sure, there's lots of stuff to work on, but there's also lots of really great stuff from them too. Yeah. They're an exciting team and mm-hmm. they're not making the riskiest choices, but they do have some interesting choices in well, those programs. It's a more mature look for them this season yeah. to be sure, which I think really helps with that move up the senior ranks. Mm-hmm. They don't look as juniorish as they did last season. Yeah. And then 10th place were Anastasia Skopkova and Kirill Alation from Russia. And this one as well was a real disappointment for them. Yeah. They obviously, if you are not familiar with Junior Ice Dance, are the reigning Junior World Champions. And so that move from junior to senior, especially in ice dance, is really tough. Usually the first season does not go super well for most of these teams. Their, their rhythm dance was, uh, I think, a good result for them. They were seventh there and but they did pretty well. They were in the mix. Yeah. You know, most of the teams from fourth to eighth mm-hmm. were not that far apart in the rhythm dance. Yeah. They were pretty close. They were really in contention with everybody else. Mm-hmm. And then disaster struck. Yeah. I don't know what happened with that lift in the free dance. He just seemed to be totally off balance yeah. right from the start. Luckily, it was only the one fall deduction yeah. and not two. And again, they were also very kind on the GOE. We had a couple negative threes, a couple negative fours, and then, what was it, three, three. negative fives. Three of each. Mm-hmm. Three minus threes, three minus fours, three minus fives. On a fall, on a lift. Again, reiterate, fall on an element, mandatory minus five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was mandatory. Not... Also, it barely got up in the first uh-huh. place. It like it was just going wrong right from the beginning. You could tell that it was going down from well, the second yeah. she stepped off the ice. It it there is no case for a minus three on this lift. Yeah, definitely. Well, and the hard thing too was right after that they go into their one foot step sequence yeah. and he was really off balance there, had to put his foot down and only got a base level. And again, they were nice with the GOE. Too nice. Only barely negative. Two like again, plus I, ones. I know, because the thing with these elements where they separate the levels for each skater is you're supposed to basically average the GOE for both. But I mean, his was disastrous enough that basically you're assuming that hers was fantastic. Perfect. It it was decent, but yeah. his was really rough. So hers was nowhere near exemplary. Mm-hmm. Let's put it that way, which yeah. is what a plus five should be. Yeah, hers was you know a solid plus two, mm-hmm. and, and his, his was, was a m- minus four. Yeah, so that does not average out to plus one. Yeah. If you want to give it a minus one, I'm not mm-hmm. going to fight you on it. Yeah, I disagree, but I'm not going to fight you on it. I will fight you on that plus one. <laughs> yeah, again, they they were definitely being kind yeah. on those elements, especially. They they came back pretty well for the rest of the program and, you know, were able to get a level two on their serpentine step, which yeah. is a good thing, you know, a decent level for, you know, a new senior team. Yeah. The bigger but, concern for me later in the program was that rotational lift that was mm-hmm. only a level two. Yeah. 
The lifts are the easy place to get your levels, guys. Yeah. Uh, they just seem sort of shaken by the whole thing. And I mm-hmm. think as well, this is, it, it's a tough program to sell, especially for such a young yeah. team that the sort of performance and interpretation of the program was lost after that fall. Yeah. They were just focused on getting the elements done, which yeah. I totally understand. But I get it. But you gave yourselves a hard job Mm -hmm. picking this weird medley. Can we talk about how weird this medley is for a second? The first cover is really weird. The second two sections I think are fun. They're they're fine. The this cover of bad is bad. (laughs) I mean, yeah. It's it might work for like an older, more mature theme. It's it, very breathy and sexy. And again, she's so young and just she's 17 years that it feels it never felt convincing to me, even in the practices yeah. where they were doing run throughs. This is what I expect from Hubble and Donahue. Yeah. I probably wouldn't like it on Hubble and Donahue, but I would at least it get it better yeah. on Hubble and Donahue. Also, we should talk about the fact that Nobody knocked for the fact that there is no rhythm underneath that cover for the first 30 seconds. I mean, it's it's just a really slow beat because the with Ice Dance, you're supposed to have a consistent beat on the music throughout the entire program. And there is a beat at the beginning, but Barely. it's just a re- exactly like a really, really slow beat. I was really surprised that nobody you know, hit the button for yeah. a violation of music requirements. I wasn't expecting them to get the violation mm-hmm. call, but I was expecting them to get some knocks. Mm-hmm. Even just like two. One or two, yeah. But Gillis and Poirier got mm-hmm. a music knock. Yeah. I don't remember which program, but they did get music knocks. Yeah, because that's the thing. There were a few, you know. Other people got music knocks over the course of those two programs. Mm-hmm. I don't understand and like violation of choreographic restrictions people got that these two didn't get any of those and mm-hmm. i am confused yeah, yeah. Wong, Wong and, and liu, liu had two which... i mean that could be a separate issue the hard thing with these you know when they say violation of whatever restrictions it doesn't tell you why just whether it's for music or choreography but these two scope co-ventilation we were both saying in practices like is that enough of a beat like are you yeah we were I would still recommend putting, like, just <laughs> hand it to a music editor, say, put a steady beat under uh-huh. this. It's not, it's going to be super easy to do. It's not going to impact the program much, the, just to be safe. The tech panel was mean here. Mm-hmm. The judges were not. Yeah. Next time, the judges might not be nice to you. Yeah. And I and would again, not be shocked to get the knock. Nothing wrong with playing it safe. Just, you know, a subtle beat mm-hmm. in the background just to make sure it's there, I think would be... A good safeguard against smart choice that. yeah just in case mm-hmm. because if it was me you'd be getting the knock yeah sorry but you would <laughs> <laughs> there isn't a knock there isn't a steady consistent beat under that first section of the music yeah it comes in eventually but it takes a really long time yeah okay so that was the ice dance event definitely an up and down one yeah and it was a roller coaster of emotions i'm still definitely. not happy about it and in case you hadn't guessed, the obvious highlight for both of us, uh-huh. bar none, bar none, Gillis, Gillis and Poirier's Poirier. free dance. It's it's just such a shame that they had those issues in the uh-huh. rhythm dance because they would I, have at the very least been basically tied for second. Yeah, and I I still believe in all my heart would have won the free yep. dance if they had not had those issues and been in the first flight i need to see this free dance about a thousand more times in person yeah i'm gonna just show up at their rank (laughs) and just sit and watch (laughs) i don't think you're allowed to do that but i'm gonna try because i need to see it again let's see if they have any more you know visiting events it's a public rank (laughs) it's in a rec center it's a public rank yeah we can just do what we did as kids at mariposa and just sit (laughs) With our head on our hands in the window and stare lovingly at them skating. (laughs) It might be kind of creepy, but I kind of don't care. Well, and for me, I just really hope we can see it 
you know, both programs skated well at yeah. their next event and whether that's enough for the final, who knows, but at least have a strong event to, to show what they're capable of yeah. across both programs. Because they are capable of such greatness. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, they're so good. <laughs> I, mean, I will say as well, shout out as well to Lorio and Lagax uh-huh. free dance, which to me is definitely second runner up. highlight. Yeah, runner up for this free dance event. It is a solid runner up for yeah. silver medal of the free dance in my heart. Yep. Because it is so much fun <laughs> and... Everybody was living for that. Not just him, but especially him yep. in his polka square top. <laughs> and then, of course, for Weekly Waxel, there Ice are three dance of falls. Them. Ice dance falls. Don't do it. It's They're never fun. Would not always, recommend. Always disastrous. Zero out of ten would not recommend. Yeah. <laughs> no just thanks. Just no more from any of you. <laughs> Please, no. If anybody else falls, this is... All of the ice dance falls for the Grand Prix. I was about to say, we've gotten all the falls out of our system and everybody's going to be okay from now on. You better be. Yeah. Or I'm going to lose it. <laughs> She's going to scream at the TV <laughs> since we won't be there in person. I mean, I kind of do that already anyway. Yeah. Insight into our lives. <laughs> I scream at the TV pretty consistently. Oh, we talk to the skaters through the screen uh-huh. all the time. It's just... M- much more habit. than we do in person, yeah. which is why I did that in person. Because <laughs> that's exactly what I would have done in our living room. Yeah. Alrighty, so that wraps up the ice dance here. We will be back soon with the other two disciplines from Skate Canada. Um, And yeah, and then Finlandia coming up soon. Yeah, so if you can't wait for more, check out the video on our YouTube channel. Yep. It is a super quick recap of, I say super quick, it was like 40 minutes. Yeah. Of all four disciplines. (laughs) That's quick for us. Yep. We could have talked about all four disciplines all day, but we had to get out of that Airbnb. Yep. So... You can go watch that over on our YouTube channel. Yep. And our other, you know, discipline recaps will be up soon. Yep. Okay. So thank you all for listening. And please let us know your thoughts about this week in figure skating at flutzescast at gmail.com. You can also follow us at flutzescast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for even more skating content. Check out our website, flutzescast.wordpress.com for episode guides and other fun stuff. And if you like what we do, consider leaving us a review wherever you're listening. We'll be back very shortly with the rest of Skate Canada, but until then, keep a watchful eye out for those flutzes and waxels skating fans. Oh, 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 oh,